Man, I remember one time I was at, I was on a trail and I just sat down on the park bench and I was looking at the water and I was looking at how like disgusting, how terrible the water looked and how muddy it was and everything. But like far out past all of that, like the water looked so calm, it looked so peaceful. And in that moment, it was like God was just showing me like sometimes you have to go through some stuff in order to get to where you want to be. What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Living Out Loud, where we're living out loud for the one who died for us. My name is LJ, and if you're new here, please consider subscribing. We have conversations on God, faith, and living like Christ. And today, I have a guest. I am so excited to talk to this brother. This is one of my newest friends, uh, Jay Highsmith. I mean, dude is super amazing super talented videographer he's a fellow youtuber he's a father husband dude is just awesome i mean we were talking earlier and he's got he's got some stories y'all he's got some stories maybe we can uh, dive into that today <laughs> let's welcome jay Highsmith. what's up man hey hey what's going on man i appreciate you for having me on yes sir yes sir thank you for coming i'm super super excited dude uh, before we go in, I guess we can like talk about a little bit of uh, what we were talking before um, mm -hmm. we recorded. I mean, we were just talking a little bit about um, our significant others and um, just like just the similarities in our stories. Yeah. It, was, it, it was crazy. So, um, yeah. Could you tell us just a little bit about uh, Jay and his story? <laughs> <laughs> my, my story with my wife? Yeah, yeah, with your wife. Yeah, so <laughs> it's funny just how how similar our stories are. But um, yeah, uh, like I was telling you before we started recording, you know, I just how God continued to move, you know, through my life and how He spoke to me, even if I didn't realize He was speaking to me. Um, mm -hmm. And there were a few big areas in where He spoke. Um, one is that uh, in 2014. I was praying for you know God to reveal my wife to me uh, by my birthday. Time came and passed, and I you know just didn't think anything of it. Uh, I was like, well, you know, God just didn't answer that prayer. It wasn't until a year after we got married that I you know sat back and thought about it. I was like, yo, the Friday before my birthday, I had an event at my church, and my wife was there at the event. You know, so. <laughs> In my mind, I'm like, you know, God is going to make it clear, like, this is my wife, you know, but yeah. no, like, he suddenly revealed her to me. Like, she was there. I just didn't know it at the time. Mm. And then um, in 2015, somebody, uh, there was a, a man who prophesied to me and told me that my wife and my daughter, or my wife and my, and my kids were on the way. And it wasn't until a few weeks before my wedding in 2016 that I, I found an old email or found an old draft of an email and the date that he told me that my wife and my kids were on their way was the exact same date of my wedding date in 2016. You know, so yeah. it's just, <laughs> God just continues to move. He continues to blow my mind. Um, yeah. And then we also got married quick. You know, we had started mm -hmm. talking October, um, the end of October 2015 and we're married in May of 2016. So, when you know, mm. you know. Yeah, yeah. And I was telling you earlier, like, I was really skeptical of that saying, like, when you know, you know. I've heard that uh, all my life. And I never had that feeling before. So I was like, okay, why why don't I know? <laughs> but when I uh, met my, well, I've known my girlfriend since first grade. But um, when she was revealed to me as my wife, like, I, I'm like, yeah, I know now. <laughs> um, especially just the way that. Yeah, uh, like God orchestrated things. Like it, it, it was, it was nothing that I did myself. You know, like it was literally mm -hmm. all Him, all His timing and stuff. So I, like I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So you did mention that you guys got married um, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Was there, was there any pushback in in that? <laughs> so i'll say this going back to me saying when you know you know uh -huh. you really have to trust god even more and, and mm. talk to god even more because when you know there's always going to be people who 
are questioning you or second guessing you, not because they don't want the best for you, but they just don't want you to rush into something that you're not ready for. You know, mm-hmm. and there will be some people who are who are legit negative and don't want you know you to have a best relationship. Yeah. But then there are also people who they want the best for you. They don't want you to rush into things, but you also have to trust you know God um, with that. You know, there were some people who felt like we should have waited you know a while to get married, but again, like yeah. we knew we believed. Like, this is what God is telling us, you know, because initially yeah. we were talking about getting like married in August, September. There were people mm-hmm. like, you should get married in like November. And then God revealed May. So, yeah, I, I feel like that's that's really common with a lot of like promises that God give us. Mm-hmm. With, like, like he give us a vision. There's always going to be like, you know, like the, the naysayers, the, the negative things. But. Ah, man, we really have to, like, push past that and just remind ourselves of what God already told us in the first place. So, whoo. Yeah. If you even think about back to the Bible, you know, yeah. um, Mary found out that she was pregnant. Joseph wasn't, it wasn't revealed to Joseph right away, you know, Ooh, but that was something that was good. revealed to her, you know, but yeah. she had to continue to push and trust God through that. So it's like mm. sometimes things aren't revealed to your spouse when they're revealed to you, you know? Yeah. No, 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 that's a good point. <laughs> that's a really good point. I don't know what it is, but I feel like like sometimes like women get things faster than us. <laughs> sometimes. Do you do you see that? I don't know. I'm not married yet, but <laughs> do you see that? Does your mom does your mom hear I mean not your mom, does your wife hear something a little quicker or sooner than you sometimes? I think it goes both ways. You know, mm. um it, it definitely I definitely is that my wife hears from God before she hear, before I do sometimes, but then mm-hmm. there are also times where I hear from God and she hasn't heard yet. And and on either end of it, it can be frustrating. It's like if you know, like this is what God <laughs> yeah. told me, you know. But the other person is like, "What are you doing? Like God didn't reveal that to me. Like not with the attitude, but you know, it's just <laughs> it. You got to press in and trust God even more, you know. So it happens, man. I don't know why I want to ask you all these married qu- marriage questions. <laughs> I'm an open like, book. Go ahead, ask. Sweet, sweet, sweet. I know, like, in, you know, in February, I usually do, like, love and relationships. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm just in a new, like, I'm in a new season. I'm, like, newly dating. And, like, it's really it's really mm-hmm. serious, you know? So I'm, like, mm-hmm. trying to get all the wisdom I can <laughs> yeah. regarding this, man. Um, mm-hmm. hmm. Is there anything that you wish you knew Uh when you were first dating your wife that um you know now or like advice you would give yourself um young the younger jay uh, the <laughs> the biggest thing i would give my younger self is to financially plan um mm. I, I wasted a lot of money throughout my 20s um and mm-hmm. a lot of it wasn't even me wasting money on myself it was Somebody saying, oh, hey, can I borrow a couple hundred dollars? Oh, hey, can I borrow this? Can I borrow that? And I would let it happen, and then I don't see that money again. You know, so Mm -hmm. my savings takes hits, you know, because Mm -hmm. I'm being nice and helping other people out. You know, those are things that prevent me from, you know, from saving for marriage, Mm -hmm. for a house. Um, Or just, you know, waste money on stupid stuff. Like, I don't have to go out and eat every day. You know, I don't have yeah. to uh, go to the movies every weekend. You know, it, <laughs> there are certain things that you can do to prevent that. Um, so that's what I would tell myself. And I will, what I will say is my wife was very big on that. Um, yeah. Her her, and her dad were, like, very beneficial in helping me, like, financial planning, do different things like that. But if I could tell my younger self that pre-dating my wife, like, that's the, that's the biggest thing. Hmm. It's really interesting that you said that, man. Because <laughs> you talking to me because, like, the way that <laughs> almost every Sunday, bro, I be eating out when I know I don't have to eat out every Sunday <laughs> for much, you know. Uh-huh. I, I don't, I don't have to do that. And um, actually, my girlfriend is, um, she studied like financial planning, mm-hmm. and we actually had a, a conversation on finances, and I just got really uncomfortable because mm-hmm. I'm like, man. I don't know so much about this. Yeah. <laughs> so that you know, like it's an area that even I'm like still learning myself. You know, <laughs> just to give a little background, the, di- <laughs> the the reason why I always remember the day that uh, me and my wife started talking is because the day that she told me how she felt, um, 
which we can get back into that later if you want to. But mm-hmm. the day that she told me how she felt, um, I had also started a weight loss challenge and my car was also totaled. Wow. Yeah. It was just parked outside the house and somebody hit the car. Oh um, man. Yeah. So, uh, that end of, no, not the end of that week, the following week, I think it was, I went out and bought a new car. The, the mind you, the car I had was paid off. The car that I mm. just bought, my payment was six hundred twenty dollars a month. <laughs> mind you, I, I told you I had no savings. Oh I couldn't goodness. afford this car. You know, they sold it to me anyway, and I got the car on a Tuesday, I think, and on a Thursday, I think we went to a Lecrae concert, mm. and on the way home, we just had a very, very, very real conversation. Mm. And I thought she said at that moment, like, if I don't return the car, like, it could hinder us from getting married as soon mm. as we would like. What she told me, like, a couple of weeks ago was like, no, if you didn't return that car, we weren't staying together at all. And I was like, oh. But in that moment, like, that's when I realized, because um, I, I was, like, really down about it. I returned the car. Mm. And when I saw her, after returning the car, it was like I immediately had this piece, and I was like, mm. "Yo, like this is the one." Because I'm mad, I'm upset, I'm down wow. about it, but I have yeah. peace now that she's here. So, yeah, yeah. Um, that's another thing that you mentioned, dude. Like before we started recording, like there's a difference between the one that you want and the one that you need. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely, I'm definitely seeing that, man, in my own life and. Has there been any other instances where you were like, yeah, this is this is the one that I need? <laughs> it was several times, man. Um, like I mentioned, we became, we met in April of 2014. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was the first time, I think I went to an event at her church later in the end of the month. Um, and it was the way she worshipped <clears throat> that hmm. was like, yo... I could see, like, I see her as my wife. Like, I could see her as my wife. Yeah. Um, and, like, there were just, there would be things here and there where I would see, and I was like, like, this is what I need. You know, this is what I really need uh, for a wife. This is what I really need for a relationship. Mind you, there were things with both of us, you know, throughout this year and a half that we were friends that we both were like, uh-uh, like, this ain't going <laughs> to work. <laughs> you know, and we never told the other, but, like, it was just like, I can't, I can't date somebody like that. And she was like, I can't date somebody like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, man. It's funny how God orchestrates things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's up, guys? It's LJ. I know that this episode is getting good and we'll be right back. But I wanted to remind you to subscribe if you haven't already. Like I said before, on this platform, my goal is to build a community of people who live out loud for Christ. Also, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please, 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 I would be so grateful if you left a five-star review and let not only me, but let the whole world know how these conversations are encouraging you and building you up. There is so much going on. And so many ways for you to just, you know, uh, connect with me and support me in this uh, podcast platform. All of that information, it's in the description and the uh, show notes down below. Plug in and keep connected, guys. You all have been just giving me an overwhelming amount of love and support and encouragement. And I truly, truly appreciate it. I'm so grateful for all of you. Let's get back to the conversation, though. I can talk about worship all day, dude. Mm -hmm. Like it's just it's so it's so important to me so like i lead worship at my church i've been doing it mm-hmm. probably like ooh, five six years wow, now okay. I, I was 18 so maybe six or seven mm-hmm. so um yeah just like understanding what true worship is how mm-hmm. you know i can even go back in um the first time it was mentioned in the bible how it's mm-hmm. it was um it's actually a sacrifice you know mm-hmm. when Abraham was about to go up to sacrifice Isaac. Mm -hmm. Uh, He told his servants, hey, me and Isaac are about to go worship God Mm -hmm. up on this mountain. Um, Stay right here. Mm -hmm. So you're like, uh, I feel like people limit or some people can limit worship to just Mm -hmm. a song or just a feeling. But when we look at it as a sacrifice, you can look at it. Hey, me um, showing love to my neighbor. That's an Mm -hmm. act of worship to God. Yeah. Like all. 
the little day to day things, you know, like when we lay down our will yeah. for God's, that's worship then in the purest form. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, <laughs> like this, I don't want this to come off the wrong way, but there are often times when I'm worshiping God and I don't want to. Like, yeah, yeah. Just in the sense of me being obedient, like God can be like, hey, call this person. Hey, send this person mm. a text. Hey, reach out to this person. I'm like, I really don't want to, God. You know, but yeah. it's like that act of service. It's like, let me be obedient. How? And then you never know how you were a blessing to that person or how they were a blessing to you just because you were obedient to God. Yeah. Hmm. Man. You mentioned, you know, uh, before we were recording also mm-hmm. that you were um, a youth leader mm-hmm. at some some of the churches did you do anything else um ministry wise at your churches i've done a lot man i've um going back to the beginning i sang in the choir um, whoa, whoa you can sing whoa i harmonized <laughs> <laughs> i cannot sing but i can harmonize <laughs> but um i did lead a song uh, once, but uh, mm-hmm. we will not speak of that because <laughs> I <I'm> sure <laughs> leading nobody's song. But um, I was in the young adult choir. Uh, I was in the men's choir uh, by default in the mass choir. Um, I taught uh, vacation Bible school as assistant, taught vacation Bible school as a lead teacher, Sunday school teacher, mm-hmm. um, youth leader at a church where I would, you know, come kind of like Sunday school, but like teaching the youth every Sunday or sometimes we'd like play games and just do different mm. fun things. Um, I was a youth pastor. Um, so preaching to the youth or preaching on youth Sunday once a month um, where I also, you know, led event, events for the young adults. We would have movie nights. We would have um, open mic nights, um, game nights, doing all this different stuff. Um, I did sound at, uh, mm. You know, a church, and then prior to the pandemic, I was the lead for the the media team at my church. Okay, so, so done a lot, all over, yes. all over. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What do you think has been uh, the biggest thing that you learned when it comes to serving in the house of God? Uh it's not about you. Um, <laughs> you have to, you have to listen to God's voice, and sometimes be obedient to your leader, even if you don't want to. Mm. Um, there's several times there's several different times where a leader would ask me to do something like I'm not doing it <laughs> yeah. you know? and, and like it wasn't that I was trying to be rude but it was like my how I felt in those moments was you're not even willing to do this but you want me to do this you know wow. or you wow. want me to do this but the kids aren't interested in that so mm. it was like I would I would just either say okay and then not do it or just flat out tell them I'm not doing it. But um, again, just tell them like it's not always about you. Like sometimes you have to go past how you feel um, in that moment, and maybe how you feel like really is from God. But you have to seek God in those moments and just like understand like, okay, God, is this how I feel, or is this what you're telling me? Hmm. Yeah. That that used to be pff, that used to be so hard for me, man. <laughs> like ah. Uh doing things that I didn't feel like doing, didn't want to do. But like you said, it's not about you. And when you yeah. get in that, that proper mindset, like serving is about God and about um, loving your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. 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 I mean, even, even looking at it from a different aspect as well, it's just, it not being about you. Like mm-hmm. think about how, David was anointed and he was told that he was going to be king. He still had to yeah. wait until that time. Like when mm. you're anointed or you feel like a call is on your life and like you feel like you have a call to preach or you have a call to lead worship or you have a call <clears throat> to <clears throat> be on certain teams, yeah. but there's somebody else in that position who hmm. in your eyes shouldn't be in that position for whatever reason, you know, mm. but it's like, God, I still have to wait until you put me in this position, you know, mm-hmm. and it's just understanding, again, it's not about me. God, if God is telling me that I'll be doing this one day, I still have to wait until that one day comes. I can't be mm-hmm. frustrated because of who's in that position before me or the decisions yeah. that they make. If anything, I should be praying for that person while they're in that position and hope that, yeah. you know, um, they 
you know, God just continues to lead them and, and, and guide them back to the to the righteous path. And that, um, and that, you know, at the same time that, you know, people will be blessed by it. So, yeah, um, I feel like a lot of people are like afraid of obscurity, but mm-hmm. it's like a whole bunch of development happens in the dark. We can talk about like photographs <laughs> they get yeah. developed in the dark, you know, yeah. like. When, when we're in moments of hiding, I also had to learn this back in like uh, 2020. Mm-hmm. Like uh, I just felt like I was doing all these things, but nobody was seeing it. Nobody mm-hmm. was recognizing it. But it was because God was doing, you know, just like a work in me. Um, mm-hmm. There was some things that had to get out, you know, like mm-hmm. there was some char- character that had to be developed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm still in that season. Mm-hmm. You know, um, there are so many things that happens in in just uh the dark place that god god can have you in for Mm -hmm. a certain season because if you come out of that prematurely it you can mess it up (laughs) your character can mess that up you know um my pastor says don't don't go somewhere that um your character cannot keep you like um it's so important to to understand the timing of god and where he has you is stuff trying to rush oh god i'm talking yeah. to myself man i'm talking nah, to myself it's good, man. and it's also very good when you have a leader who sees like the god in you and is willing mm-hmm. to cultivate that in you you know mm-hmm. sometimes leaders don't see it and we get frustrated and sometimes leaders see it but we don't see it and they get frustrated but like when mm-hmm. it's like even on both sides like i see it and they see it and they're willing to you know be patient with you and really help you cultivate that like that just makes it it's an even bigger blessing dude <laughs> I, I, I love talking to you man like i literally feel like i'm i know you <laughs> um maybe it's a virginia thing probably man we need to <laughs> we need to freaking hang out you like what in nova yeah 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 man that's 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 nothing we need to hang out <laughs> i'm down man i'm yeah. down yeah, I also mentioned, you know, you're a videographer mm-hmm. also. Like, how long have you been doing photography and videography? Um, so I started on photography back in 2015. Um, I always had a passion for it. Like, even before I realized I had a passion for it, like, yeah. I had a passion for it. Um, when I was a kid, my mom would always give us cameras when we would go on trips, taking pictures, getting them developed, whatever. When I was 20... I bought my first camera, like a little point and shoot, um, mm-hmm. Sony camera, and I would take pictures and like record, you know, me and my friends doing stupid stuff or doing the latest dance trends, whatever. Yeah. Um, took my first photography class in 08 and then started my business in 2015. Yeah. Um, and then I started doing, getting an interest in videography in 2018. And then it just seems like my passion for videography just continues to grow and grow throughout the year. So I mean, I've done everything from, you know, weddings to corporate mm-hmm. events to birthday parties to conventions to interviews yeah. uh, to YouTube. So, you know, I, I do a lot with videography. Yeah, man. And you're doing you're doing very well, dude. You're <laughs> killing it that, out here. Man. You're I killing it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, maybe we could talk about your YouTube channel a little bit, too. Uh, um, so, like, what inspired you to start it and what what exactly do you do on there? So how I started it and where what I do now is, is two completely different things. <laughs> um, in 2019, I left the, the job that I had to, um, to pursue photography and videography full time. Mm-hmm. And um, God had revealed a vision to me even before I left about a series called The Christian Creative, where I would um, interview uh, creative Christians yeah. and give them a platform to share what it is that they do, but also encourage Christians who may, who may believe that they're not creative, you know, mm. and it was to put a spotlight on creatives because, I mean, of course, I mean, there's always a spotlight on on the secular side of it, you know, but as far as Christian creativity, like, you don't really hear a lot about it. So the, the goal was to spotlight, you know, Christian creativity. And I did that from July 19th through as far as my first video was posted was July 19 through April of 20 mm. um and then my channel shifted because the pandemic hit 
you know, yeah. to begin the pandemic, yeah. it's like we really don't know how serious this thing is. So mm-hmm. I shifted, um, and I was like, I still need to post on YouTube. And I started a series called Stories of My Life, where I would sit down and just share stories with people, talk about some of the things, talk about faith stories and things that I had been through, as well as just funny stories of, you know, things that happened in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, in, into the beginning of 21, I just shifted completely and just whatever God leads me to do, I'll say yeah. for the most part, whatever God leads me to do, some stuff I will say, like, God ain't telling me to do it, but I did it, you know, <laughs> which I don't think is necessarily anything wrong with that unless it's just way out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so again, like how I started was interviews and with stories about myself. And then it's just however I feel, you know, God leading. So sometimes I might do interviews. Sometimes it might be like a story about something. Uh, what I don't do is I don't do reaction videos just because I'm like, mm-hmm. it's just, I personally feel like it's bad taste because mm-hmm. until you know all the facts, like ain't no point in publicly commenting on it. You can talk about it in your friend's group, but I'm not posting yeah. a video on YouTube about it. See, because the way everybody had a reaction to the slap heard around the world. <laughs> And it's uh, just, there's so much into that that I see on both sides of it, you mm-hmm. know, um, as far as like rights and wrongs, yeah. you know, um, and how certain things could have been prevented, you know, but again, like people were reacting like the next day and then the each day, day, each yeah. day, more and more information was coming out in right. regards to both sides of it. So it's like, wh- <laughs> <laughs> why yeah. can't y'all just be just be patient and wait you know before you want to comment on something but of course with the way the media is today it's like if you if you wait a week then you're late you mm. know but at the same time here it is a week and a half later and we're still talking well excuse me i'm not talking about it but <laughs> it, it's, it's still all over social media yeah exactly exactly Jay, I mean, I know we had an original topic and we did not cover it at all. Uh, I mean, but like, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with where, it, where this is gone. Uh, it's, it's really like me, kind of just like really like meeting you, because mm-hmm. I mean, we've had we've had conversations here and there. I've actually did a live with you yeah. on um mm-hmm. our, our fellow um, creator Maurice Jones. I mean, shout out Maurice. Yeah, shout <laughs> all out got Maurice. everything. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but like, this is my real first time, just like talking to you real it time is, yeah. one on one yeah and i don't know like i feel i feel like you're a brother already <laughs> like you're, you're cool people man <laughs> i appreciate that man likewise i mean i think i think there's sometimes there where it's just certain things are just divine connection like you just immediately connect with certain people yeah. um and I, I i enjoy this fellowship that we're having now you know and yeah. it's funny because maurice told me about you before i had even known who you are i had known about your content you know, uh-huh. but from the first time I saw it, like I was immediately hooked to your content. So I appreciate that, man. I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> Cause oh my goodness, man. Like it's been a whole journey. I mean, like, um just me uh starting the these conversations, these interviews one on one. It was really me going out on a limb. I had a vision mm-hmm. and like I saw it, but I was like, yo me like i don't i don't see me really doing that Mm. i don't have the gear i I came up with all these excuses in my mind man yeah um but it's like once you take that step i've had so many conversations about this like when you take that step like i will handle the rest like he'll lead you he'll guide you he'll teach you like there's so much on the road but like you just have to take that first step initiative yeah (laughs) and just understanding how he how he may shift you too You know, like I told you, I started doing interviews, but like you never, and all the interviews I did, like you never Mm -hmm. hear my voice because I never wanted it to be about me. Like I never Mm. wanted somebody to be distracted by hearing my voice. I just wanted to be about the interviewer. And a Mm -hmm. lot of times you hear, you see interviews and a lot of times the interviewer is overpowering, you know, who they're interviewing. And I'm like, I don't want to be that person. So when I started shifting and having myself in front of the camera, it was like a huge shift. And I was like, is this what I really should be doing? You know, but again, like I knew what guy was having me to do. Dude, I, oh my God, we are literally so simple. <laughs> like, it's crazy, <laughs> man. Cause like I've um I tell everybody, like, I'm really not much of a talker. If like mm. um the first time I meet people like face to face, I'm really like 
quiet. I'm I, my introvert be showing sometimes. Like yeah. <laughs> I'm an ambivert. Like so, like I can Same be here. extroverted, but like more often than not, I'm introverted. I'm listening. I'm watching. Um, so that's another thing. Like learning um, in these conversations, just like pulling that extrovert out. Like just being, you know, like more vocal and like mm -hmm. actively listening. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a journey. It's yeah. been a whole journey, <laughs> <laughs> man. But that's what just—that's what makes it worthwhile. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a lot of people can be so excited about the destination that they just forget to enjoy the journey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just man, I remember one time I was at—I was on a trail and I just sat down on a park bench and mm. I was looking at the water. And I was looking at how, like, disgusting and how mm -hmm. terrible the water looked and how muddy it was and everything. But, like, far out past all of that, like, the water looked so calm. It looked so peaceful. And in that moment, it was like God was just showing me, like, sometimes you have to go through some stuff in order to get to where you want to be or in order to get to the promises of God. You know, but a lot of times we don't want to go through it. We don't want to do the work that it takes in order to get there. Or we give up, you know, along the way because we're like, man, this just isn't for me. But it's like, no, like, keep going. Like, God has something greater for you. You just have to go through something in order to get to it. Well, because you're preaching now. Like, well, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> I had to get close to the mic on that one. <laughs> you're preaching now. <laughs> Preaching now, oh my God, <laughs> that is so real. Oh, that is so good. And oftentimes we don't want to, we don't want to go through those things because of the fear, the fear of the yeah. unknown, the fear of like, uh, what if I don't make it? What if, what if, um, this doesn't work? Yeah. But that, that's exactly why we need faith. Exactly. We're not supposed to handle it all anyway. That's yeah. That's why God said, cast all your cares on Him because He loves you. He cares for you not supposed to be on us anyway right right but so many times we take on the burdens that we're not supposed to and then mm. wonder why we're stressed out wonder why we you know are going through certain things and, and just feel like we can't take it it's like because we're trying to do it on our own strength not on guys yeah oh man ah, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> man this is great dude is there anything um that I didn't ask that you wish that I did. Um, man, I don't know. I just, I mean, I enjoyed the flow of the conversation. You know, I'm all about, you know, going with the flow. Um, yeah. What I will say is this. When I started my interviews, um, mm -hmm. I had a certain, I had a set pattern um, of how, you know, set questions for how I did every interview. And then I'm 20 plus in interviews in and I'm doing one with this girl and she mentioned something about um, addiction and then later I asked her like well you know how did you overcome addiction that interview like changed everything how I did mm -hmm. like I no longer went by format I went exclusively by how God led me through the conversations yeah dude me <laughs> <laughs> like I, I've, said, I've said this before but like like season one of when I started um this podcast bro like i was very to the script mm. and i mean that, that's not horrible yeah it, it, it's cool mm. but i mean like when you can just allow god to flow in like it, it, it it's so much better it definitely makes a difference yeah. i mean i feel like sure. what is supposed to be said gets said yeah. you know Ah, so yeah, you're talking to me. That 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 that, that, that definitely was me, man. That yeah. Definitely was me. <laughs> and I I feel like you know if it's if it's meant for us to have another conversation about the original topic of down the road, which I'm sure we'll talk and have more of these down the road. Yeah. Then you know we'll talk about that stuff then. Oh, but, definitely. You know this was this was great. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoy how you how you flow with it. So. Yeah, this was dope. Appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Next one gonna have to be in person. Next one gonna have to be in person, man. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> oh man. Um, before we go though, uh, could you let the people know how uh they could follow you or connect with you and you know keep up with what you're doing? Okay. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Jay Highsmith Productions. 
um, on YouTube at J Highsmith Productions, on Facebook at J Highsmith. Um, it's just my name everywhere, so so that way I can easily be found. Um, so yeah. All right, sweet. And um, could you end us with a closing prayer? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Father God, we just come before you right now, Lord God, thanking you for an awesome, awesome interview on tonight, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for just flowing through it, Lord God. We thank you for uh, for who you are and for how you continue to move um, in both of our lives, Lord God. Father God, I, I just pray, Lord God, that you would continue to lead LJ, Lord God, that you would continue to, to flow through him, Lord God, that your favor will rest upon him, Lord God, that your blessings will just continue to be showered upon him, Lord God. May you bless him in his relationships and his friendships, Lord God. Bless him on his job, Lord God, and just lead him uh, to the destinations that you would have for him in life, Lord God. May every person who not only hears this interview, Lord God, but uh, interviews past and interviews future, Lord God. May they all be blessed um, and just take something out of it, Lord God, that is for them, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Jay, thank you again so much for coming on, dude. I, I really appreciate you. Hey, no problem, man. Like, I appreciate you for having me. I know it took us a while to get on here, but I, I'm glad <laughs> to be able to get to it. Hey, all in God's timing, man. All in God's timing. Amen. Amen. Amen.